The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of uh, the Power Trading Hour. That's what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. And of course, I'm your friendly and happy and squeezably soft host who always comes to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. What do we have? Well, we're off 22, 23 points uh, on the S&P cash. Uh, we got down to 27, 22 earlier in the morning. A lot of people ran to get out of positions and options, which made us bounce by about, oh, I'm going to say 14 points or so, and maybe 12 points. Uh, since then, we've retreated uh, from down about minus 11 to uh, down about 24. We're a little higher than that. We've been playing around in this range. There is no volume up. There is no volume down. Uh, someone is controlling the horizontal. They're controlling the vertical. They control it all. You know that show. Let me know the reference. You can email me at pat at tfnn.com. Uh, so we don't have a lot. Again, um, a little bit of a pullback on uh, the dollar today, but still holding that 97 uh, level, which it broke out from yesterday. Uh, oil, uh, of course, was down a great deal more, up a little bit. The uh, Baker Hughes numbers were out. Uh, and this is when I think you can make a little extra money in the market if you know a little bit about it for oil. And that is that we're going from the uh, winter to summer formulations where uh, pretty much over the next two or three weeks. And a lot of people will look at those numbers and other numbers and even a tightening market and think, aha, the next bull uh, move for the uh, for crude is on. Well, the truth of the matter is, uh, is they stock a little extra oil up. Uh, they stock a little bit of extra uh, gasoline to sell, but it is got kind of a bull uh, bullish bearish for uh, bullish bias for a few weeks as that uh, uh, as they turn off uh, the refineries, uh, do a lot of the maintenance, change the formulation and get it back on track. And sometimes they leave it off a few extra days to get the price going up. Uh, but for the most part, that falls apart fairly quickly by the 1st of May. So there's a little bit of organic reasons for the market to be just a little firmer. There certainly isn't a lot. Now, when you look at the rig count, you'll see that they're way down. Well, if you can't pump the oil to a, a refinery, then there is a, it's probably a good time to shut your oil rig down, do all the big maintenance that you need to do, let people take vacations uh, that can, and then come back on in a couple of weeks, which is generally what happens. So you'll probably see next week the Baker Hughes numbers also having a little bit of uh, the rigs shut down, both in Canada and uh, in the United States. Uh, but you'll see those numbers generally come right back uh, in mid-April. So uh, just be aware of that. Uh, gold's uh, up about 13 bucks, and uh, you can kind of make a case for that in that a lot of people have not been very bearish on the general market, so they kind of step back. Uh, but uh, eh, you're kind of you're kind of there. You're up 13 bucks at 1300, and the real test of the pudding will be on Monday and what gold does. Uh, did they just buy it because oil was still low, and it's now the go-to on the weekend, or did they buy it because they think it's going up next week? Well, you'll know that on Monday. But uh, certainly the market's weak. I see absolutely nothing in here that says that uh, I should cover my shorts. When you look at the put-call ratio, uh, I did it noon and then a one. Maybe I'll take a look at it during the break again, too. Uh, 
basically one for one, one put for one call. And that just tells you that there's not a predilection for anybody thinking that uh, the market can go lower. That's generally where you want to uh, be short. Uh, the reason why, uh, if it does go down, it's probably going to go down very quickly uh, without a lot of people to uh, be natural buyers on the way down. So as we kind of toy around 20 points lower on the S&P, we're off 155 on the Dow and the Nasdaq's off 50. Um, but again, the question is, what's going to happen on Monday to make uh, buyers come in? It's just been one of these things where there's been very few sellers, but even fewer buyers. Uh, the dip buyers who have been rewarded uh, for a while uh, have now gotten punched in the nose a few times. So they're not really wanting to jump in. And with no sign of capitulation, uh, none of the big guys are coming in either. In fact, most of the orders that uh, when I was looking at the market earlier uh, were much more of the smaller variety. Uh, there weren't the big blocks coming through today that you normally see uh, when the big guys are getting out of the market. Uh, and that continues to go back into the thesis that I've had for, well, I guess this week, uh, started talking about on Monday, and that is uh, five or six states have confiscatory rates on taxes with a new tax policy. They don't get to write those off in those uh, uh, very sketchy socialist-leaning states in the country. So they're going to have to come up with all that cash, which is about 8% probably uh, that they don't get to write off. So uh, especially a lot of people in the Northeast, California, are, in my opinion, got to raise cash uh, to pay all the, uh, the uh, standard state taxes uh, that they would have been able to write off before. And I think that's just enough. And if you're probably a big man on Wall Street, what do you do? You know they're selling. Um, you know it's going to be over soon. You probably just sit back. You no reason to jump in now. Whatever you got, maybe it's not that big of a pullback. You just sit back. Let them sell, let them sell, let them sell. But it's fairly consistent and fairly small. Now, maybe something else happens and the market decides to take another leg down. But at this point, I don't see a lot of change from my earlier uh, prediction that we're that really support comes in about 2650. Uh, we did have some very good volume on the way down, but not kind of blowout volume. We haven't had anything out there that says people are worried about lower prices. And guess what? That makes me worry about lower prices. So we'll go through that. We'll go through some charts today. You can give me a call at 877-927-6648. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can always put a message in the den. Uh, but uh, other than that, just kind of quiet first segment. We're just kind of breeze on in to Friday's uh, close here today. I'll be with Tom O'Brien at 3.30. We'll be talking about some stuff. I wrote a big article today in the Tech Insider about uh, bubbles and euphoria. And uh, maybe we'll touch about that uh, on that with Tom at 3.30. Be back in a minute. I shall return. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we're back. Well, let's get a little history done and then we'll move on and keep moving on. On this day in 1983, IBM introduces the IBM Personal Computer XT, which stands for Extended Technology, for a price of $49.95. Sounds cheap. It features an Intel 8088 uh, processor with a 10 megabyte hard drive, eight expansion slots, a serial port, uh, 128 uh, kilobyte RAM. 40 kilobyte ROM, a keyboard, and a one-sided, or one double-sided, 360 kilobyte floppy drive. Wow. Sounds like some power there. I remember when these came out, I was wholly unimpressed. Certainly an Apple II for the price, or a Commodore 64, uh, if you added all the stuff on it, was far more capable. At the time, and the only reason to spend that kind of money uh, there was some uh, software, business software, but not available on the other platforms, and that was about it. And, of course, without software, your hardware is nothing but a big pile of hardware. But on this day in 1983, uh, the IBM PC was born, and it bored me. It was uh, many years before I really got into uh, IBM PCs after that. Uh, again, we're just hanging out here, uh, minus 20 on the S&P cash. Not much happening as we started the show off uh, today. As we said, uh, volume's okay. Um, we're up about 4.4 billion shares. It's going to be a little lighter today. Options continue to show uh, the, the market wants lower prices next week. Uh, at that, it's just going to slow pullback. Um, we've at least I've learned to wait till the last five to ten minutes of the day uh, to actually uh, to uh, actually characterize the day. But uh, we've tried to push up. We didn't have any power. Tried to push down. Didn't have any power. I suspect Monday will now be it. We don't have much in the way of earnings. I think it's Thursday before we have the next company of any sign whatsoever. Or Thursday night before we have the next uh, earnings. And of course, uh, the last news bit we had was 8.30 this morning, and there's not much coming next week either. 
So the trend, I think, is your friend right now, which is down slowly. Uh, but uh, everything I look at says that you probably should not see a low uh, before maybe mid next week. Now, maybe it just hangs around here. Maybe it goes down to my uh, target of 2650. I just don't see any reason to cover and not a lot of reasons to go long this market. But uh, maybe a surprise will come. Uh, we'll be back uh, with Tom O'Brien at 3.30 to talk technology. And uh, for the rest of the show, it's time to actually bring up some charts and take a look at what's going on. Uh, yes, all these newfangled PCs are just fads. My Commodore 64 was fine. Uh, two, 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 two. What else do we have? Um, oh, first question out the day is Microsoft. Uh, do I see anything else um, for Microsoft? And eh, pretty much the same thing. That is that it went up, tested the previous high, was short five, five million shares. Um, the real thing and continues to be it is the incredibly light energy off the December 26th low up to these uh, retests of previous highs. In the case of Microsoft, it was that December 3rd high of 113.42 with 35 million shares. It got tested with 29, so you were 6 million shares short. Um, you can just see the kind of uh, slope all the way down for volume. Now, you had a little bit more volume yesterday with 25.3 million shares. Today, just about, man, we're going to call it 14 million shares. But my guess is that we're going to continue down, probably have one big day that's maybe around maybe minus 50 on the S&P cash, and that's going to set the low, and the dip buyers will return. Anyway, uh, sitting at 27.30 on the S&P cash. Uh, let's go ahead and look at some of the other stocks that we were looking at before this week. We'll go and do a retrospective, maybe of last week. And let's look at the fourth. Um, to, to, to Carbonite. Uh, we talked about this one being one of the few stocks that actually tested the previous lows on lighter volume. You've got the February 8th low at 22.35 with 4 million shares, 4.4 actually. Got into it with 1.5, uh, and you bounced back into the trading range. Very light volume today. Uh, if you got the cash in this one, probably time to come out. It's probably going to consolidate for a little while, but it did exactly what it was supposed to do, which is when challenging um, a previous low on extremely light volume, you're going to get an instant uh, bounce out of it. Wyckoff called it uh, a special name. Uh, what did he call it? Again, senior moment. Uh, it was a bounce with uh, out preparation, except this one actually was. Uh, but you still need some consolidation. Uh, I want to see how GWPH did. Uh, it went up and tested its previous high uh, back on September 27th. That was 179.65, did with that with uh, 2.3 million shares. March 4th, you spiked it with 1 million shares. Back into the trading range, as a great deal of these are. Uh, support comes in probably another couple bucks lower uh, into this gap. You gapped up with uh, 2.4 million shares. On the downside today, you've got 173,000. If you were dying to get into this one, certainly looks like you're not going to find any better support or risk reward for GW Pharmaceuticals, the only legal marijuana company. Uh, what else do we have out here? Uh, we were tracking the uh, uh, these uh, railroad companies because they've been coming up on rather light volume. Kansas City Southern did pull back today. Volumes eh, in the in the range, but you had three tests on lighter volume of the January 18th high at 111.09. Now uh, you're pulling back today on 800,000 shares, so not a lot of volume quite yet. L I L A. Uh, yeah, down just a tick, but I don't know if there's anything. Uh, they tested the previous high of November 8th of $20.01 with 740,000 shares. Got into it with 280,000 shares. You're back 
into the trading range. Uh, let's look at Splunk real quick. Then we'll look at Target, see how it did. Uh, Splunk was probably the worst offender of going through a previous high with light volume. It got up to 143.70 as it blew through the uh, September 4th high at 130. That had 3 million shares. You had like nothing on the early part of the 1st of March. Uh, and all the volume, 7.2 million shares, came in uh, as a sell. Uh, that's continued on down to the 119.57 low that we saw today. We finally back into some on that right around that 120. We'll be back in a minute. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. <laughs> Somebody in the den is talking about dropping a bunch of punch cards uh, as they walk down the stairs. And it was kind of funny because... Uh, Generally, what you would do is you draw kind of like an X on the end of them and on the side so you could kind of figure out where they went in the deck uh, if you ever did that. But, uh, man, I always I always made sure that I had a box or something so that there was a zero chance of dropping them uh, after I dropped my first load of them. And uh, even the, I was very lucky that I think they were only about six inches tall, but always a uh, always a hoot 
to drop punch cards because they've got to be in order. But uh, you only do that once. Now it's uh, pretty much a breeze. Uh, yeah, $5 a trade. Anyway, we're talking about Splunk when we came back. Yeah, some of these have kind of come back uh, to support levels. Uh, there may be a little bit more, though. Uh, Target, of course, came out with earnings. Popped a little higher, but it never got out of its out of this uh, trading gap uh, that goes back to the uh, 20th of November. That had uh, 21 million shares. Uh, you got, uh, what, uh, 8 million shares on March 6th, and now it's back in here. So it may be bullish, but it doesn't matter how bullish it is right now. Uh, you're not getting the volume, and you're not holding previous highs in the market for a great deal of stocks. Tiffany's, another one of these uh, that had come back up to uh, its big gap down. That gap down happened on the 28th of November with a little over 10 million shares. You got into that on March 1st with 1.44 million shares. I mean, you just knew uh, with that light of volume, you just weren't going to get much. Now, you haven't had a, a particularly great pullback on a lot of these. Uh, and what you generally get uh, if these things are going to fall apart is a little push higher. You get above the nine-day average and then the next uh, tick down below the nine-day and uh, all hell breaks loose. So we're not to that point yet. So you got to keep an eye on it. We're off 16 points on the S&P cash now. Having a little bit of push up here into the close so far. But we'll see what the close brings. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, XLU. Oop, went a little far with that one. XLU. And that's... Uh, Kind of interesting in that very light energy on the way up off the December 26th low. It's got into this uh, December 13th high, 57.17, got to 57.71. Uh, hasn't really pulled back. Uh, any close back below that 57.71, though, would be a fairly decent sell signal here at 57.33 now. Uh, the utilities, of course, kind of a place to go uh, when you're kind of scared about the future because, of course, they'll probably always be there. Uh, but at the same time, um, they tend to come back. They just tend to come back less. Uh, and the idea there is, you know, if you've got to be 100% invested because you're a fund, uh, you can get into something like utilities or add cash there and, uh, and have your 100% long, but uh, try to outperform the market by coming back less, which is generally what that's all about. Uh, let's go ahead and look at some of the other ones we were talking about a little bit farther back. Let's go back to the 27th. Uh, Nike was uh, testing at its high back then. We were talking about how these stocks were breaking with very little volume and what's happened since then. Uh, on Nike, it was at the September 21st high at 85.82, 14 million shares. You got into it with 6 million shares on the 8th, and it's rotated right back down and into the trading range. Again, not a ton of energy off the top so far, uh, but certainly no real gusto to go break out those previous highs. NXPI. Uh, eh, just kind of stuck. Um, you know one I didn't look at that we talked about, I wanted to look at was Restoration Hardware. I haven't talked about that one for a while. Uh, the only reason I didn't short this thing because it was one of the best-looking shorts out there was the fact that this thing has like 20 uh, or 30 percent short interest in it. Uh, didn't seem to matter to Restoration Hardware. It got to, and went through its December 4th high at 148.54, 6.6 million shares, uh, with uh, 664,000 shares. So a tenth of the volume. Uh, you actually had 800,000 shares on the first. Uh, it rolled down the next day. You really haven't had a lot of volume come in. And again, what you're looking for, if you want to expect the, the entire market's going to go to hell in a handbasket instead of just pull back a little here, if it just continues to pull back a little bit on light volume, then you probably have a bounce coming. The worst thing, if you're long-term bullish, would be to go up a little bit, go above the nine-day average, and then close quickly right below it. Uh, that's generally kind of the death knell 
uh, a Joe Dinopoli pattern that I've always liked. So uh, we looked at that one. Let's look at SSO. Um, this is a uh, ultra S&P 500. We were looking at this just because it basically came up there with light energy. It actually had a little bit of volume as it attacked the high, but didn't have anything in the way of volume on most of the way up. Uh, this one um, did kind of touch the nine day, went, spiked it on March 4th, it's back down underneath. But again, you're probably gonna need a little bit more happening out here to get something going. Uh, we did, did that one. Uh, let's take a look at AAN. Uh, which is Aaron's rents. Um, another one that had tested its previous high of $56 and, uh, of uh, September 24th, did so with 2.33 million shares, got into it with 674,000 shares. Uh, and of course, uh, lower today, not a lot of juice either. But, uh, you know, after 10 years of a bull market, when 10, nine, eight years of a bull market, let's call it that. Um, what you do worry about is a market that comes up and doesn't come off with volume and discontinues to drop a little bit every day until uh, lots of people are trapped at the highs. That's generally the uh, death knell of a market for a while. Let's take a look at some of the other ones. That was the 27th, I think. Uh, let's go back here and look at the 28th. Uh, let's see what I had in here that I liked. Oh, got a question already in email. We'll go to that. Uh, Intuit. I don't know what he wants about Intuit. So let's take a look. Uh, do, 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 do. I mean, you did, this one did break out, did so. A little bit of a pullback. Um, you got the sign of strength. Out here on the 22nd, you've pulled back to it. Um, again, if the market would make any kind of low, uh, that is a very bullish pattern. Uh, you'd want, ideally, in a market that is somewhat troubled, uh, to come back to this 231 uh, or try to buy it as close as you could to the 231 October 3rd high. Um, I guess that's about it. You're kind of close here. You may not get that 231. Uh, but unless the market starts looking a lot better, it is problematic. Uh, do I think NIO is uh, finding support? We'll talk about this one when we come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we had a question from, let me get back to this. Where's he at here? Uh, Tamar from Seattle. Uh, NEO, which is a uh, uh, electronic vehicle manufacturer. Um, I'm pretty sure they're based in China. Uh, they decided not to build a facility. They're about the third company this year that decided not to go ahead and start building EVs, mostly because the amazing crush uh, coming out of uh, big manufacturers with EV. Uh, right now, most people don't know it, but the biggest manufacturer of ele uh, 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 electric vehicles is BMW. Uh, and uh, there's a whole line uh, that, via that uh, Volkswagen's coming out. They even have a dune buggy uh, that'll be out this year. And of course, uh, Mercedes and uh, Porsche. In fact, the Porsche, I think it's called a TACAN, T-A-Y-A-N, uh, is uh, they plan 20,000 for the first run, uh, the first year of their uh, sports uh, car uh, EV, and now they're going to have to double it. Uh, and I guess uh, there is a, a little bit uh, to why Tesla probably changed uh, their marketing strategy to go downscale uh, when some more well-known companies uh, were pushing uh, some sportier cars in, in a little bit. Anyway, uh, NEO decided not to make uh, their own manufacturing plant. This is where this thing gapped down on the six with heavy volume. Uh, the question is, do you think it's falling, finding a support uh, short term? And uh, man, I think this is a... Uh, uh, for I anybody outside the big uh, five manufacturers, this is going to be a fairly tough year as almost all of them are going to have new vehicles. In fact, by uh, the first quarter, the end of first quarter 2020, there's supposed to be 110 new vehicles out. So if you wanted to buy an EV, there's probably not a little better time. Uh, if you're not looking at expensive EVs, uh, then I think, at least from what I've seen so far, that uh, Kona for Hyundai is the best deal at about $35,000. Uh, compare it to the Tesla that has roll-up windows and uh, rubber uh, mats for carpets at the same price. Uh, certainly seems to be more well thought out, at least on the low end. Uh, those cars are a little hard to get, but... Uh, uh, everybody that reviews them, I've seen one at the dealer's lot that they had down here a few weeks ago. And, and drove it up and down the street real quick. They didn't let us all have very long test drives. But, it, you know, if you're looking for that kind of car, uh, it's not quite what I'm looking for. A big, beefy truck or uh, something that's uh, like a Corvette. Either one of those I could drive. But, but uh, for thirty-five grand, not a bad-looking car. So Neo. It's got some neat looking ideas. Uh, I just don't, I mean, I think this sector outside of the big guys is problematic. I like Neo better than a lot of the other ones. 
if you've already been selling the, uh, uh, the, your EVs for a while, you've lost your uh, government uh, uh, um, dividend, uh, which was a lot of times 10%. Uh, and now the newer cars like NEO coming in will still be able to get those 10%. And that's why uh, the, uh, the Kona from Hyundai and some of these other ones that are just coming on seem to be such great deals. They've got that 10%, uh, you know, roughly 10%, depending on what it is, uh, deal. So actually, uh, the people that come late to the party are going to have probably better prices for a while. Um, again, without building a plant and getting to scale, the question is, can you sell NEO to somebody else? And right now, I think, you know, all the big manufacturers already have their cars. If you could find a manufacturer that didn't have a EV in some level of production already, then I think maybe you could. But everybody I think I know of was out there uh, that does have their own products already. So I don't think they're looking for anything over the board. Uh, the question is, and I was bringing up uh, the other day with somebody I was talking to, before Ford, there were over 100 uh, car companies. And I think it's kind of the same thing. It's going to take a little while to figure out who has the magic combination of the right product. Uh, but again, all these new companies are going to have that um, uh, subsidy from the government. And the older uh, EV companies, uh, Prius, uh, Tesla, are not going to have that anymore. So it actually opens the gate for uh, other people coming in. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, just looking back here. Uh, and maybe somebody's playing it for for a little bit of a pop. I just don't see much going on in there. Uh, we're off 14 points. We're back up where we found resistance before in the market, uh, but we shall see. Okay, to, uh, oh, let's look at, I have some more emails. Got into it, got, uh, got that, got that. Okay, I think I got everything here. Aveo, A-V-E-O, uh, pharmaceuticals. Yeah, this still hasn't given any signal. Let's see what else out here. We wanted to look at uh, Veil. Um, somebody actually asked me about Veil a few weeks ago. And of course, the big problem is that this thing blew apart on earnings. Uh, and of course, it's got a huge lawsuit uh, for a dam that busted. Um, or is that the other one? Can't remember now. Uh, but all these. Uh, similar companies have kind of a, a cloud over their head. I don't see any reason to get involved in that cloud uh, until it's all sorted out. Uh, but uh, was it Vale or the other one that had the damn bust? I think somebody in the den probably can tell me. Uh, yeah, 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 Tachyon. Okay, uh, what else do we have out here? I don't see anything, a reason to get in. These things have... Too many legal issues at the moment. Uh, to, 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 let's see what else we have out here. Uh, is that Walgreens Boots Alliance? Um, didn't even make it back up to its previous high before it rolled over. Uh, these continue to be tough. Uh, take a quick look at the IBB for Jackson. Um, I think we were talking about this coming back to 104 for one of our callers. Uh, and he had uh, the puts on it, and I thought there was a, probably a fairly good reason that it got back in to this area, about 105, 106. Uh, certainly, we're kind of there. We got kind of light volume on a Friday, uh, but uh, if you got uh, options good for another week, yeah, I'd have to sit on my hands, I think. We'll be back in a minute.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of of TFNN. Also, a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And yeah, we're back. Yeah, having kind of a slow melt up. We're now down just uh, 10 points on the S&P cash as we go into the weekend. Um, NASDAQ off 29. Russell off five. We have a little bit of a bounce here. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the big names and see what we've got going on. Uh, again, eh, kind of making up a little bit of the gap down lower on Microsoft, got to 108.81. Again, today is options expiration. So don't be surprised that we pivot out on Microsoft at exactly 110 by the end of the day. Uh, didn't look at Apple today, but it looked, yeah, we'll see how close Apple at the close comes to uh, 170. It's a little higher than that now, isn't it? Let's see what it is. AAPL. Oh, it's going for 172.50. We'll see how close it gets to that, but there's a strike there. See how get close it gets pushed to that. So you're kind of back into this trading range, and again, uh, options expiration over today at the close. Uh, so maybe they pushed it down a little bit. Now going to push it up a little bit. Now Monday and Tuesday are options rollovers. And that's why I said that I think that the first uh, time that you would have a, a viable bounce is going to be Wednesday. Monday, uh, going to have a push up or down. Uh, if that's up, it'll be down on Tuesday. If it's down, 
on Monday. It'll be up on Tuesday and Wednesday. You're going to get back into trading. Uh, but again, no volume up, no volume down in these markets. They just continue to drip down. You get some uh, dip buyers. Uh, but again, you know, we're still not closing up. Got about a little bit uh, more than an hour to go. And we've seen big sellers come in at the very close before. Anyway, uh, we'll see you Monday. Same bat channel, same bat time. Sell when you can, not when you have to. And we'll see you with Tom O'Brien at 3.30.